seat. Again, I'd like to officially again uh, welcome everybody for tonight's meeting. We've already had our close, so we're going to move on with our regular. Uh, David, would you like to come up and make your presentation to council that you'd like to do? Yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor. So everybody can see you, so the camera can see you down there, and people can hear you. And Very good. You go. Okay. Well, I'll, I will start with uh, a presentation uh, to my mayor. Oh, cool. Uh, official Tree City USA hat. I would like to thank you for being a part of the celebration. Thank you. And uh, I have here a, an official. Tree City USA pin. Make sure it puts lots of holes in yeah. your shirt. Yes, yes. absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. We're pulling more dirt in than he did. Well, <laughs> that's why I want you to stay on Tree because next year we're going to have another one, uh, which will be the 21st. I said, I said, I got broken if you want to break your I'm always looking for a golf hat. Yeah. And know that you had the opportunity to see this in the past. Oops. Would you like me to help hold it up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I got it, right. man. Okay. Yeah, let the camera zoom in on it there. <laughs> I move the podium back a little bit. So we have the official Tree City USA banner for the town. And I want to make sure. How many years? Uh, this is the 20th year. Nin yes. 19. Wow. Oh, oh, sorry, 19th. 19. Yes. 19. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I get ahead of myself. I'm already <laughs> anticipating the 20th yes. because I have to record all the uh, uh, submissions that go to uh, next year. Yes. Together, so. Thank you guys for the phenomenal job you do. Well, thank you. It's absolutely appreciated all through town, especially on the council. Yes. Um, there's several topics I'd like to talk about. Uh, one in particular was brought up at uh, the Urban Forestry Advisory Commission. And this uh, is the sense that uh, we've received over time is that we're not getting out a message, and that's the care of trees. And so, um, I, what I need, I need your buy-in, I need you to back the organization in terms of educating the public. And it can be as simple as, uh, posting a link on the uh, town website. Um, and here are some of the examples of the different uh, problems we have coming up. And one of them in particular is called the Spotted Lanternfly. It's going to be the new emerald ash borer of our region. It just entered Virginia this past winter. Uh, instead of just one tree, it's going to affect 35 species. And one of the, in our region, uh, it affects one of the uh, viticulture, the grape industry, uh, and it is one of its uh, favorite uh, food sources. So we, I know that they've, uh, Virginia Tech has been holding seminars for them, um, but um, I don't think that the, our local uh, uh, citizens know anything about it. Uh, so it's this type of thing that I'd like to see posted if possible. Um, I have a number of other documents uh, that I brought in on a flash drive. Which one do you want? Um, go into the uh, oh, folder, the handout folder, and there's one that says 24 ways to kill a tree. I'm oh, sorry. I think it's up here at the top. Yep, third one down. Next one top. Oh, there we go. And um, this is basically the type of information I would like to get out to the public. It's very simple. It's uh, diagrammatic. Uh, it explains what really most people don't understand of why we are having problems with our trees. Uh, and this can be everything from, um, and I have to say, I made mistakes in the past and that's how I've learned. Uh, when I worked for a municipality in Illinois, uh, when the 
quote unquote, three-way broadleaf killer came out for grass, weeds. Uh, I was good friends with our golf course superintendent. And this is back, I hate to say how long ago, but it was in the 80s. And uh, he was saying, you've got to try this. It gets rid of your clover, it gets rid of your hen bit, it gets rid of all your chickweed, which the regular 2,4-D was not touching. So I said, great, and I put it down. Now, unfortunately, there was an unforecasted rain that afternoon. But I had 120 oaks in the park, and I lost 20 of them. Part of that component is called dicamba. And dicamba is, uh, is death on oaks, hickories, your nut trees, basically. Uh, and it's that sort of situation that people don't understand. Um, when they keep on applying this material year after year after year, it builds up in the soils. And eventually, uh, the trees do succumb. Now, if it's straight 2,4-D, it's not such a problem. But it's such as uh, over in, uh, let's say, the other side of the, the ridge, uh, in horse country, there used to be magnificent white oaks up and down these country roads. And it wasn't until they started using this three-way broadleaf killer on their pastures to reduce the amount of weeds, all of a sudden the oaks are dying. And they don't know why. And that is why. Uh, so it's, I mean, we have uh, a horse country here also in our, in our northern half of the county. but. Um, it's, it's this type of knowledge that uh, I feel would be beneficial to the public in general to know. And it's these little detail things. Um, and of course, uh, John, you would know for sure which type of trees are really something you can't plant next to a horse pasture. Um, I'd probably say I probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, that's one of the handouts sure. is which trees do you actually remove if you're going to be using it for horses? Uh, and this is, this is the type of knowledge that, uh, again, most people have no idea. And they wonder why their horses uh, or their livestock uh, start to decline. And it's because of simple little problems like this. Um, there's another problem coming into town. Uh, it came out from the southwest Texas to Tennessee into uh, southwestern Virginia. Uh, I didn't realize that it uh, made it all the way up to Richmond. But those of us who have walnuts, at least walnuts that are harvestable, you have to know that now's the time to take them out. Because there's a disease called the 10,000 canker disease. <coughs> 10,000 canker disease, excuse me. If you wait, and let them go through the whole process and die. It'll be just like your ash trees. They won't be worth it uh, to take down because uh, the value of the wood with a dead tree versus one that's alive that you cut and then send to the mill is vastly different in terms of its structural strength, in terms of the way it uh, responds if it's to be at least a load-bearing surface. So, um, so now's the time to know that. And it's letting these sorts of uh, little tidbits of information out that I think would help everybody in the long run. Um, now here's a, another handout. <clears throat> this handout is, uh, represents a uh, some activities that uh, the tree stewards have had ongoing for the past uh, probably seven or eight years. They've had uh, work sessions uh, that, that are actually pre-planned. Uh, I, I will go with uh, and sit down with Ann Rose, uh, your town horticulturist, and we will review the types of activities that the tree stewards are capable of performing. And this won't be your big tree work but it will be your, your younger trees where structural pruning uh, or safety pruning, lifting uh, your canopy so that uh, vehicles or people do not uh, uh, run into trees. Uh, I have to say that Anne and her crew do the bulk of 
of all this type of work. But uh, the tree stewards, uh, what you're seeing there is a list of um, the types of things that we do. Everything in yellow is uh, pretty much highlighted simply because the, the works leader who's going to be on that particular task uh, must work with Anne in terms of either traffic control or um, something that involves a high degree of safety uh, level uh, because we can't have the tree stores out in the street. They're, they're wonderful people, but um, there's a limit on their their world because they're not used to it like somebody who works uh, in the public work section all the time. They're out there. They know these vehicles don't see anybody except the lines in front of them. So um, we've had a close call, and that's why I highlight everything when we're in that situation. Um, so uh, if this isn't something that, I mean, I'd like you to be able to bring this up, talk about it, uh, see the benefit of it, uh, but if we could incorporate something either under the uh, UFAC uh, heading, um, I would appreciate it. Um, and pretty much that's why I'm here. Um, it's really for UFAC in the whole because it's the town that, uh, that this is going to benefit. Thank you. Thank you, David, and thank everyone that's involved in the UFAC and the Tree Stewards because everybody has a, a huge, huge benefit for you guys doing that kind of work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Police Department Radio Communication System, Chief, would you like to come up and let us know what we need to get for you? Yes, sir. I seen him the other day, he's brown. <laughs> no good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, can you come a little bit, bring it up here a little bit so that your voice carries. Very good. Mr. McCool down the other end, I'd like to get you on camera too. All right, Mayor, members of council, I appreciate getting a few minutes this evening. Um, so we've been researching options to address the existing radio communication system. Um, the one that we're currently utilizing is, um, is aging. Um, it does not currently share interoperability with Warren County Fire and Rescue um, and will, before too long, no longer be interoperable with the Warren County Sheriff's Office as well. They are uh, in the process of migrating to uh, another system, uh, at which point in time we'll have to figure out some sort of a patch to be able to, to communicate with them. Um, we've been struggling with the shortcomings of the existing system for several years, um, and at times it's just gotten dangerous. I know, I know some of you guys have been along uh, on the ride-alongs with some of our officers. Um, and I don't know if you've ever ever seen them do what we call the Statue of Liberty, where they actually have to take their portable out and, and raise it above their head trying to get <laughs> service. Um, again, obviously, that's a it's kind of hard to defend yourself if you're in that type of a situation. Um, what we're currently using is an 800 LTR system. It is um, antiquated. Uh, you can't buy parts for it anymore, at least new. You can find something on eBay, perhaps, but uh, they, they no longer manufacture the parts for it. Um, and we don't own the system. Currently, we're, we have a vendor that provides the system. We, we purchased the subscriber equipment, the, the radios that are actually in the cars and on the, on the portables that are on the belts. Um, but this infrastructure, we don't own that. So um, that's where we're looking to move towards, is actually purchasing a uh, public safety radio system designed for the type of work that we do. Um, and what we're looking for is, is, is a system that is um, sort of a federal, uh, the Project 25, P25 uh, compatible system that we're looking at would provide interoperability with um, obviously fire and rescue, county, state would actually allow us to be able to, God forbid we have a, a major incident, active shooter, something like that. Um, we would be able to uh, much more easily maintain unified command because we'd be able to talk with the big red trucks and the, and the guys in the brown uniforms. It makes a, makes a big difference to, to uh, an operation such as that. Uh, so we've, we've uh, been given some preliminary estimates of about uh, $550,000 to complete the project. 
Uh, town manager and finance director have already identified about $50,000 of seed money uh, to, to, uh, to start the process, and we're exploring options uh, to, to finance the, the project. So, what we're, we're requesting is council to support as we continue to investigate viable options to resolve the uh, issue that we're facing with here. We're going to have two yeah. questions. Um, Chief, when was the last time we upgraded this equipment? This is the same system that the county uses, and I started with them about 20 years ago. It's the same stuff. Joe, did you want to add something before we go around anymore? I just wanted to let uh, Council know that our idea tonight was just to put it on Council's radar. We have money in the budget for a debt service. The only question we don't know is, is how much is that ticket price going to be and how much that debt service will be. So we don't know if we estimate it high or too low. Jake? Is there any opportunity to, uh, you mentioned the Sheriff's Department is looking to upgrade their system and change it. Is there any opportunity to piggyback on that and have well, a similar system or the same system in an economies of scale? We're talking to the same vendor, so they're going to be, obviously it'll be utilizing the same the same network. Um, so we'll realize, we would realize a, a savings obviously back on with them and, and the interoperability piece of it would be much easier because it's it's all the same, same outfit. Um, so that's, that's one of the things we're looking at. Obviously, their figure's much higher than ours, but we've got a much smaller geographic area um, to deal with. Um, so our, our bottom line figure is going to be lower. And again, this is a, this is a rough figure with um, you know, list cost prices for subscribers, for, for subscriber equipment, those types of things. Uh, and the vendor that we're dealing with, it's, uh, they, they're on state contract, so the pricing would be kind of where it is. We, we wouldn't have to do or anything like that because it's, it's Jane. Well, Jim, going back to what you said, you said we have the money in our debt service? No, we have money uh, for this next year's coming budget. We put 50000 to be allocated for debt service on this project if we had to, to um, borrow money to fund this project. So we did put money in this, this upcoming budget, the FY19 budget of 50000 50, um, but we're, we're currently subscribing to a service. Do we pay a monthly fee for the service? Yeah, yes, we do. Nominal or something substantial that would actually offset uh, some of this? I don't know that one off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. I can look into it and get yeah. back to you. I was just wondering if it was actually something that would be worth putting towards it or if it's $100 it's, it's, it's or It's going to be nominal. Uh, it's, okay. it's nothing. Carol, is it possible to get a safety grant? Well, and that's one of the that's that's one of the things that we're looking at. Uh, the the outfit that we're working with has a has a section that deals with that, and we've we've started working with them to try to see if we could identify um, anything along those lines. And that's one of the reasons that we're looking at the particular type of system that we're looking at. If we chose to uh, go with something that was not P25 uh, capable, which is this Project 25, it's a, kind of the federal mandates of how the radio systems work. Um, in order to promote the interoperability between agencies. Um, if we were to go another route rather than that, it closed a lot of doors for, for funding and, and those types of situations. I'm just kind of curious, you know, I've been on the castle now for a long time. This is the first time I've heard we had major issues with our radio system. Yeah, I understand. And I, 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 it just puzzles me that... Well, they got me an analog. Everything went this about 20 well, years I ago. Understand that. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, sure. I mean, being, being as critical as it is, I'm surprised the chief before you or even the one before that didn't bring it up to us and let us right. be aware. I mean, this is a chunk of money that yes, we're sir. talking about. Yes, sir. And right now, that chunk of money is going to be hard to come by. Right. I, I under, completely understand that. Um, and again, we're just we're planning for the future. Well, I understand um, the that system too. that we're dealing <laughs> with is, 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 again, it's antiquated and the, the, uh, the service provider is there's an uncertain future there right. so we know how far the uh, so what's, uh, what's the warranty on this new system well most everything is, is five years out of the gate but obviously that's a so who services the old one and what's their the old one is service say? serviced by the the provider that is that owns the the we currently use it for all communications so they 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 manage the system as far as the the subscriber equipment we, we take care of that as it goes on. But this is going to connect us with the sheriff because the sheriff's going to move forward. Yes, sir. fire department's moving forward. Fire fire department has always been has been on that 
system for the last at least 10 years. Yes, so we're going to be getting up to speed hopefully in the next couple of years to, to be there. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, to put it bluntly, without without making this type of a situation, we will be able to talk to the cab stands and the construction outfits. Joe? But the one thing I wanted to add was once Kale came on board, we realized, I knew that we had some uh, what you call dead spots in town. Um, but once Kale came on board, we came to realize that the vendor that's actually uh, servicing our equipment now, his, it's like to say, we don't know how long he's going to stay in business. Well, I understood he was And so that's when, when we started building the budget for FY19, is when we earmarked some money to, to move forward on this. And our intentions today is just to let council know what we're working on. And, and it's uh, coming. And it, it will, something will be coming down the pike eventually. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kale. Yes, sir. Anybody has any questions after me, okay, I'll with me. All right, uh, use of the trolley for the Humane Society. Last year we had two trolleys, Joe, that yeah. we approved and they used them heavily. Uh, yeah, to some degree they did. I mean, they, what they did last year was they separated the two uh, pick up and drop off points. Uh, the previous year, they only asked for one trolley, and they only had one pickup and drop-off location. Last year, they uh, utilized two, one over by Target and one by Walmart. So they're actually uh, uh, asking again for us to con contribute to the use of two trolleys for that event in August at a cost of... Uh, 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 Ms. Hart was able to get us a, a quote on that, and that will be... Uh, $1,159 for that uh, event. Gene? I'm just, I'm just trying to think. Uh, where does the county fit into this? This is a county function. This is the Humane Society, not county. Well, I know, but they're the ones that... They're, this is one the the where they... Society. Well, they raise you know, money. Are they going to the county and ask them for any money? Or? Yeah, they get money. They get their regular budget. But this is for the canoe. Okay. What do they call it? The it's the wagons for dragons. Yeah, the wagons for dragons. Event. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I just want to be sure that it was cumbersome. We're all getting our fair share. I guess. Well, we definitely get a good share. We get. I think they got thirty-five thousand dollars, so that saved the taxpayers a lot of money, a lot of change. I have no problem. Yeah, Jake. So uh, a little bit of a different angle from what um, uh, Councilman Tewalt saying. How can we do this for the Humane Society um, spe uh, specifically, but not something that we do necessarily for any other uh, Or we run the trolley, and they just ask if they could specifically have two trolleys for that event, because that event they usually have a couple thousand people there, and they try to park them over maybe over to the Walmart, is that where they parked them last year? Well, last year they had two locations, one at Target yeah. and one at Walmart. It was, it was a simple way of getting citizens to that event because it was very well attended. For them to make $35,000, it was well, well attended. So. I'm not arguing that it was a, yeah. a good event. What I'm saying is how do we differentiate from one organization from another organization has to use the trolleys for free? No one was ever asked to use it. And that's the other thing, is, uh, as I remember it, this was the Town of Hunt Royal sponsorship for the event. I believe we're credited as a sponsor for letting them use the trolley. But point, as near yeah. as I know, I in four years, I've we've never had another group come and ask for it. So it's pretty specific. So if another, another group did, then we, we have to council to okay. say yeah or no. Are you good with it? Sure. And this, the estimate of dollars are if we were renting out the trolley, but not actual cost, correct? No, yeah. they're actual costs. That's actual cost for us. Yes, that's, 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 why, that's what we're charged by the hour from the trolley company. So our sponsorship then is um, twelve hundred dollars. Yes. From their side, it's a little bit of sponsorship. From our side, we have to bear the cost of operating the trolley. It's kind of like mine, the, the Salvation Army and the chamber, same thing, chamber. We, we just 
plus bonds for protection. Plus, staff had a boat in it last year. Staff yeah, we had a boat. We're going to have a boat in it this year. Uh, I've asked staff where they haven't got back with me <laughs> okay. yet. But last year, we did participate and we did raise over 2000 Maybe the Royal Examiner will put a group together. <laughs> Chris? No, I mean, I like it. Okay. John? Yeah. Gary? I have just throwing a question out there. What, sort of, what impact does it have on the residents who use the trolley here in town? Oh, there are extra trolleys that they bring in for those okay. folks. Okay, then I'm all for yeah. Bill? Okay. Um, we're okay? We'll sponsor them $1,200? Right, it'll be on the consent agenda. Okay. Thank you. Yes. One thing I would ask is that we work with the trolley, with, with the Humane Department, because I would like to have them capture numbers, how many people are actually riding the trolley, because do we need to have it for that many hours? I mean, the, the drivers are keeping track of our ride, ridership every day, and they, they see where the pickups are and that kind of stuff. So if we could work with them to make sure that we really do need two trolleys throughout that entire period. Well, I think the reason why we used one, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but they used one to shuttle back and forth everywhere. Now they have two trolleys stationed at different points. Sure. Where people, they're not, they're trying to keep the people from going down into where the activities are. They're trying to get them to park at a satellite lot somewhere. Right. But Get but, it yeah, I, uh, but the only thing I would ask is if we sure. have the trolley driver keep track of those numbers oh, absolutely, and the yeah. pickups so we no can problem. see how many people are actually u utilizing that And that will be good for next year. Yes. Right. And I think that's a good move, what Ms. Hart brought up, because therefore we can analyze it and make our own educated decision that, to tell them that do they really need two. Because they did manage one for one year, and then they, we, we, we did um, uh, entertain it last year for two, and now we're two again. So. I mean, I think it's a great move for the council because when they raise $35,000, that's $35,000 tax money they don't have to, to get from the county, which we all pay county tax, so it, it, it all runs downhill. All right, moving on. Ordinance amendment for the adoption of reference of the state vehicle laws. Doug? Uh, this is something that the town does every year. Uh, the state allows us to adopt the uh, state traffic code into the town uh, traffic code by reference and uh, this allows uh, the police department to uh, enforce as town ordinances the state uh, traffic code and that has um, um, two big uh, benefits one it shortens uh, the uh, town code almost literally in half and secondly, um, it uh, allows uh, traffic violations to be charged as um, town uh, code violations, and, and the town uh, gets to keep um, the fines so, uh, as uh, local uh, tax money. And it has the effect of uh, um, several hundred thousand dollars a year that uh, we make off of it. So. Uh, it uh, makes it uh, even, uh, a whole lot more effective to help keep the roadways uh, safe. Uh, we help fund the uh, uh, police department that way, and uh, it, um, it's just all around um, more effective. But uh, we do have, by state uh, law, we do have to uh, re-adopt it every year. Do I have that ready for next Monday? Yes, sir. Gene? Well, I have two questions. Does that have to be uh, advertised as a public hearing? Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, uh, you know, what, last year before we had a problem getting the money from the court cases, did we ever get that all worked out? Didn't that come through the county? Yeah, it, uh, it has to, uh, and don't ask me why, I've never been able to figure that out, but um, it, it has to be, it's collected um, by the general district court, it is set down to the state, um, I guess for auditing purposes. Then it's sent back to the um, circuit court, Warren uh, County Circuit Court clerk, and then it's uh, remitted back to the finance department. So there's a, a lag time, and uh, why it goes through all that, other than possibly for audit purposes, that's the only thing I can see. So we are getting the money eventually. We are getting it. It just takes a few months, lag time to get it. Just, just curious. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why you go through all those steps, but that's smarter people than me. <coughs> Anyone it's else have any questions? questions? Huh? It's called beer rockers. We do have to take that through public hearing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Planning Commission resignation. Mr. Gussie has moved on. He leaves a seat that he need, we need to fill. Jennifer, how many people do we have that we can interview for that seat? We only have three interviews scheduled for your next work session. Um, and we have advertised to see if we can get any more. All right. Uh, gentlemen, you good for 6 o'clock for the three interviews? I think we have them starting at 6.30. 6.30? I didn't think we started anyway. Because three, that's 15 minutes a piece, that's 45 minutes. Well, even if we start at 6.30, we'll do what you'd like. Yeah. What, what do you want? 6, 6.30? 6.30. I don't care. I'm not okay, free. To whatever these guys at work. I need six thirty. Six okay. thirty is a lot easier for me. Okay. That was my thought. I was sure. trying to no make problem. sure everybody could make it. I get consensus. Their consensus says six thirty. They always go over. No, they don't have to. You don't have to be finished, guys. No, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, I know we don't have to be finished, but you know, I mean, I like to keep that train rolling. All right. Under council discussions and goals, time permitting, anybody have anything to bring up? Gene. I got one thing, and I've been paying attention to it in town, is we haven't painted any curbing for the last 20 years, apparently, because the last year. Huh? Hey, year four, oh, yeah. I know they have some machine that went around. Well, I, I can see it. I, I rode around town today, and almost all of it is either gone or it looks so shabby. And make sure if we do paint it, get the regular highway yellow and not that other type of yellow that we used a couple years ago. It could never be painted on that side. Because I like to see it match with the center lines instead of that bright yellow that we normally had before. You must be in my head, Gene. I was thinking the same thing today. I was driving down. I was like, man, these curves are really faded back. Actually, they've really been working <laughs> well on the fire hydrants. They've really been yeah. attacking yes. those. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I'll get. I'll address that. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Appreciate it. Yeah, I have some. Go ahead. Go ahead. Under the uh, stops program, we've been meeting monthly. We're taking a real study plan on Shenandoah Avenue. Uh, pedestrian safety is one of our major concerns. We're looking at a cross walk for pedestrians that is well marked, well light. Uh, different kinds of signals to alert that uh, cross crossing is in effect. It's going to be not as pricey as I thought, but it will have a price to it. And I'll be coming to you in one of our sessions very soon to discuss how we can finance that. We're going to look at Shenandoah Avenue first, and we're also going to move to South Street Second. And we're going to take a long look at that study that came out in 2015 by VDOT. So we're going to have to do something with pedestrian safety. And I know we, we're working on the education piece. We're working on an ordinance for jaywalking. We're working on uh, improvements in all the crosswalks. But, you know, the price of a life is far much more than... You know, 10,000 or 20 or 100, whatever figure that we want to put onto it, but the life in this community is well worthwhile to save. Bill, what's, what's going on with the ordinance for jaywalking? Because I tell you, I get so frustrated knowing all the work that we're doing, and you, now we're talking about costs, and people aren't using the crosswalks, crossing right in front of the Motel 6, or crossing from any point from Martins on down, um, and, and with full confidence of just walking out there and all the cars are going to hit their brakes. Um, so I see that all the time and it drives me nuts knowing what we're doing trying to... It drives a lot it. of our residents crazy too because I get these calls to discuss that very issue. Hit one the, other the chief has a program where he is hitting every um, menu in our community such as school kids, the senior citizens, um, trying to think of all of them. There was a list of 10. Of course, we were on the um, River 95-3, um, Sergeant Robbie Seal and myself, discussing this very issue and discussing that fact that uh, uh, you just brought up. The 
The prime time on South Street is three to seven. There's five months of the year that has uh, really caused us a lot of issues in this community. Uh, crossing over, you know, if you look at a lot of the codes, they'll tell you that you cross at corners, not in the middle of the street. And I'm surprised, you know, our delineators, people run over them. Uh, so one guy just flat. How many of them have we replaced already? I can't. Well, we removed them there for a while. I know we, we line. Oh, we you removed a bunch of That's why we did line painting and stuff. Yes. I can address some of that. Jaywalking one is. Um, I've done all the legal research on it, <clears throat> and we're trying to figure out the best way to educate the public on um, uh, actually enforcing the ordinance. Uh, you know, do we need to put up uh, signage, or do we not need to put up signage? Uh, it's actually already in the state code that we could enforce it the way it is, but I think we probably need to put it in, in the town code because uh, it's part of the motor vehicle uh, state codes, which we incorporate into our town code, but I think we need to make it a specific part of the town code. And then uh, because uh, this is part of what we're trying to debate uh, in the town, uh, not all streets have crosswalks, and so do we need to notify the public that if a street has crosswalks, do you need to notify people to you know, cross at an intersection or cross where there's a crosswalk? Because that's what the state code says. I know if there's, if there's no crosswalk, you don't cross. If there's a crosswalk, you can cross. Well, what progress does that have to get? Well, there's. that's not what the state code yeah. says. I can send you the state code, but we've got to educate people how you, how you no, Doug, you're Frogger is not closely. a real life thing. Doug, you're working closely with Kale and Bill. Yeah, we are trying to figure out how to get today. this. I mean, it's been a year, and, and, and there's been great strides made with getting markings, but there are a lot of people that will walk five feet away from it and cross. You know, so I don't know. Yeah, there are people who are more It's definitely an ongoing project, that's for sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not hit somebody up on the Dalton Royal here at the OIG. Christopher? Oh, thank you. There's two things. One is in reference to uh, Mr. David Dushy. I just wanted to say that uh, he's an incredible person, and he's going to be irreplaceable as far as what he contributed to this town. And uh, I wish him well in Atlanta, and I hope his back gets better so he can enjoy Atlanta with his son. Um, but I'm a better person because I got to know him. So I uh, just wanted to say that on record. And the other thing is, <coughs> I'm losing my voice, is the... Um, effectiveness of the street sweeper. I don't know who to address this question to. Yeah, uh, manager. So my question is how effective can it possibly be when the cars are not being relocated? Well, drive around. Yeah, to drive around. I, around. I lived in, well, to add to that, I lived in an area in Savannah, Georgia, where we had sweep, sweeper come and you had to move your car on certain days, certain hours, so they could actually get where the cars are. Because it's like otherwise 20 to 30 percent effective. And we have a lot of off street parking or on street parking. So we have this brand new truck, but how effective is it due to policy and practice? I don't know what the schedules. I mean, they I see yeah, it out it, there all the time. It, yeah, it's, it's out there full tilt. Whoever now. calls, got a dirty street. They call, say, hey, can you? But your streets, you know, what I mean, all stuff's still. Sure, you know, yeah, it goes under one vehicle. <coughs> You're yeah, talking on an ordinance or something we there. We tried that years ago with snow removal, and it just doesn't work. By you know, having them on left side, right side, times this that. Right. And we tried to enforce it, and. We took one to court and the judge threw it out, so it was too many mountains did not. Unenforceable. It was unenforceable because people work and they park their car during the day when you need it to clean and move. And the judge just said, just please man, do it. And unfortunately our streets are dotted with vehicles that people just have parking there. They're legal, they have tags, they have inspection, they have insurance, and they're legally able to park there up next to the curb. And people can pull in front of your house and park and leave it for days and weeks and months if they want, as long as they're legal, correct, Doug? For the most part, yes. Yeah. 
But I totally understand what you're saying because all the debris washes under that one particular vehicle. Yeah. The street sweeper cannot get it. He's not going to get out with a broom and reach under there. He just has to go around it. And, but, so. Joe, if you can think of anything. Yeah, that I can uh, get with staff and we can. Next time you have your staff, just to see if, you know, uh, I know we have those problems with the antique cars. They're setting along and they got years of build up on them. So. Well, you know, we used to do most of the sweeping at night. And in fact, I'd bring the crew in and let my man come in at 6 or 8 o'clock at night and work during the night. And that wasn't effective either because then the people would be home, the cars were there, and the next morning you were right back to again. So we never did figure a way out to get the streets swept properly. Always a juggle. So. Yeah. Any other council member have anything before I say something? Everybody good? Okay, as everybody knows, Main Street the ordinance says if you have a business on Main Street, you're entitled to use the town parking lot. There's no parking requirements of one, two, four, five, eight spaces. For some apparent reason, Chester Street has always been left out. So I have a request from a business owner that would like to send this back to planning to see what they think about adding Chester Street from Main to Laurel into the ordinance that says that they can actually use the town parking lot as their parking area requirements. Would that be a kind of a true thing to say? Uh, to bring yes. it back in. Um, you can refer that to the planning commission. Okay. So council has no problem if I can get consensus to send it to the to the planning. To let no them mull it over and see what they got to say. Okay. Jeremy, could you have the town planning to or yes, Joe, whatever y'all need to do. Okay, send it to them and let them mull it over. And anybody else? Yeah. Joe, you have anything? No, I'm good. Meetings adjourned. Have a nice evening.